welcome back to my channel. This is Ann P of Fiber, Floss, and Fiction. Today is Wednesday, the 5th of August, 2020. Uh, to any new viewers, welcome. I hope that you enjoy what I am going to share with you today and that you have a reason to hit the subscribe button below. And if you are one of my returning viewers, thank you for coming back to spend some time with me and um, welcome back. I hope things are going well in your corner of the world. We are definitely in those dog days of summer here. Um, right now I'm just waiting for fall. Um, these long hot days to get over the hump and into cooler weather are always long. <laughs> um, it's, it's been very warm here, so hoping for cooler weather in another month or so. Uh, I've got my usual three kind of sets of things to talk to you all about today. And so we're just going to go ahead and get started. We've got knitting up first, then books, and then cross stitch. So my first thing to talk about for knitting, I guess, before I even get to the projects living over there, I have two kind of housekeeping things. Um, the first of which is, if you are somebody who has wanted to take a class with me but has not had the wherewithal to either be near a Stitches event or go to a Stitches event that I've taught at, the good news is they are in the process of getting classes scheduled online. Um, they're finishing up the schedule. I think right now uh, I've submitted my class proposal for a six hour class on the yoke sweater. Uh, it's kind of the custom fit and technique of figuring out how to customize a sweater for you. Um, that has been submitted, has been approved, and hopefully we will be getting information that I can release on how to sign up for those. So you can do it from anywhere in the world as long as you have a an internet connection that's fairly speedy um, because it will be all online. So the good news is I will actually come to you at, at your end of the world, wherever that is, um, and the classes uh, that they've got scheduled will happen in September of this year. So about a month from now, actually. Um, so I will share more details on that as soon as I know them. Um, right now, I don't have a link to send you all to, but just know that it's the weekend of September 12th and 13th that I will be teaching my class. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, kind of bookmark that weekend and I will let you know as soon as I know where you can go to sign up for that. Um, they have officially canceled Stitches Midwest, which would be happening this weekend, um, that the in-person version is not happening this year. Second up, um, I've had several folks ask me in the past about this, and going forward, uh, it will. I'll have information to release around Labor Day here in the United States, which is the first weekend in September. Um, I will be offering an Advent kit this year. Um, so the kits will be comprised of a set of really fun minis. There's actually two color palettes to pick from and they're based off of a Victorian Christmas cards. So think of those kind of traditional um, holly berry color and pine tree color um, with some fun things thrown in and then kind of a more traditional uh, sort of Victoriana color palette that'll be dark greens, dark plums, rose, kind of dark rose, um, some lighter pinks. Um, and there is a whole kit that will be put together where you'll get, you know, one little package to open each day from December 1st through 24th, including some little add-on goodies and a themed pattern, which you can choose to knit or not, but it utilizes the mini skeins that are coming in the kit. So stay tuned for that. I should have more information on how and when and where to go and purchase all that information from um, shortly. It is in the works. I am finishing dyeing up the last batches. We wanted to have everything ready to go before it's officially launched so that you know that everything is basically sitting in a box ready to ship to you 
uh, in the early to mid part of November so that you have this in hand to start December 1st. Stay tuned. Okay, now let's go on and talk about my other knitting projects. I have a pair of finished socks for the 100 day, Days of Socks Knit Along. These are the Dewdrops socks. Pattern is by Lori Law and she's Ocean Wind Knits and this is her yarn. This came as a sock kit for her club from 2007, I believe it is. So they've been in stash a long time. Uh, I replaced the gusset heel with a fish lips kiss heel on them. Uh, everything else was knit as written. These are actually the 68 um, stitch circumference. The pattern has five sizes in it. And I think they're gonna be gifts because they're a little bit big on me. I normally knit the 64 inch uh, foot circumference. The yarn again was part of the kit Ocean Wind Knits Merino and it is in the colorway Galvanized. Um, I'll give you a close up of this little cable pattern that's supposed to look like dewdrops. It's this kind of circular shape. Um, and then there's an interesting ribbing pattern that actually has some um, moving stitches on it, traveling stitches on it. So these two, this pair is done. So that's the first of my full pairs for the 100 Days of Socks uh, knit along that I am hosting. And it has been so much fun to see what people are working on in the Ravelry group. They have posted, you know, chit chat and in progress and finished sock photos over there. So I am totally loving that. Um, the next pair of socks that I'm working on is uh, plain vanilla, so they're just basic knit, knit, knit socks in the round. Um, the yarn is the Blue Face Baron from Countess of Blaze. She's a UK dyer uh, called Girl at the Rock Show. That's the colorway name. Here's what it looks like in the skein. <clears throat> and these socks apparently are quite the uh, fan favorite if you follow me on Instagram have sock number one finished, which I showed you last time. It's funky fish lips kiss heel. So crazy, crazy pooling of the colors on this. So this one's done. And then I went ahead and cast on sock number two. So it's not gonna be an exact match to the first one, which I'm fine with. I think I started at a slightly different place in when I cast on and so that's where that one is right now. I think I have about 20 more rounds to do before I start the heel. Um, knit on size ones, twisted, knit one through the back loop, purl one ribbing, fish lips kiss heel, and this wide toe. And yes, the colors are really this crazy bright. So kind of plain in the back. Um, I did do, am doing a little bit of manipulation to keep the bulk of the color um, shifts on the front of the sock because to be honest, that's what I'm gonna see when I'm wearing them and most people don't see that part of your leg and certainly not your foot. So uh, I am fine to break up some of the uh, planned uh, striations of this just to get it to look the way I want it to. So just incorporating some easy, quick, short row um, portions of rounds in there and that's what's causing the colors to shift. Okay, last but not least, I have still been working on my portage sweater by Melissa Shashwari. Here's what it's gonna look like when it's finished. So I did finish the body last time and I started work on this shawl collar and it's got attached pockets as well. The collar is going to take almost an entire skein, maybe a little bit more. It's massive. Um, I currently have it on two long circular needles because one was just not getting the job done. So. 
You can see that I've picked up stitches and I have been working the garter stitch collar, which is worked this way, so it's the whole circumference around. Um, this is Willy Wonka Fibers. Um, it's a new Blue Face Luster DK weight that I am dying specifically for this swe sweater kit. New colorway called Cinnabar. And has this nice big um, ribbed hem at the bottom and this gorgeous honeycomb cable for the, for the back of the body. The front is just stockinette and then this garter stitch um, collar. Even though this collar looks really wide, I am only a little more than halfway through it. So I still have several more movies <laughs> to watch to get it done. Um, but I have tried it on. That's one of the nice things of these top-down constructions. You can put it on. I like where it hits on me. It's a longer, almost tunic length um, kind of jacket. And I'm hoping once I get the fronts done that the sleeves will go fairly quickly. I would like to get that done this month and um, be ready to have the kits of my yarn to go with the pattern for sale also around the beginning of September. Um, I think that's it for knitting. Yep, just looking at my notes. So let's go on and move ahead to books. Hopefully books will be a little bit shorter this go round. I just have two to talk about. The first is called The Queen's Poisoner. So this is a fantasy novel um, because it's sort of magical realism set during the medieval period-ish. There's a lot of that going on. Um, as you read through the book, you realize how many parallels this author has created to the story of the Yorkist claim to the throne uh, in England and Richard III. Um, the main character is a young boy named Owen who is his, his family is accused of treason by the king, and he's basically being held as a hostage at the court. And there's some political machinations going on behind the scenes, but he um, is being held as a surety, basically, for his parents' good behavior. The king is, this will sound familiar, um, a hunchback who took over the crown uh, the rumor is he killed his two nephews, who were the previous king's young sons. Uh, but when he took over the throne, he won the throne in uh, a major military battle. He's a military man. And um, the previous king was like Richard III's elder brother, Edward. Um, blonde and king-like and very sort of everybody's idea of what a king should be and look like. Uh, so this young boy gets sent to the palace, to the king's palace, where he's being held. And um, he comes to find out about what the fountain magic is that the king has at his beck and call. And he also finds a friend in this relatively young woman um, who is sort of living in secret at the court. She lives up in this abandoned tower that nobody's really, they don't go to it and they're certainly not aware she's in it. And it turns out she was the previous king's wife's midwife who also knows about poisons. So there is sort of a backstory that maybe this young woman is the person who poisoned the king um, and is how he died and has some leverage with the new king at court although that is not doesn't come to fruition um, it was an entertaining book it is not really young adult even though the main character is young um, but it is the beginning of a series of which I think there are four books so this kind of sets the stage and that's mostly what the book did 
it wasn't a great read. There's some interesting parts to it. And of course, if you're a history buff from that time, just before the Tudor period, during the Wars of the Roses in real life, there's lots of little tidbits in the book that you keep thinking, oh, yeah, that's that's like what the history tells us. Um, and that is also followed up in the author's note at the end. So it's a fun little book. Um, wasn't riveting, but it was a fun kind of summer light read. And the characters are good. Um, there's not a ton of magical things in it. Uh, that's sort of a backdrop for some of the other things going on. And most of the magic is in the form of telling the future. So if you like historical fiction with a little bit of magic in it, uh, a, good, a good choice for a summer read. The next book I read was called Working Stiff. And thank you so much to Julia, my friend Julicious, for sending me her paper copy of this book. A nonfiction book about a woman who is a medical examiner for the city of New York and uh, what it's like it was like for her when she was doing kind of her hands-on training with the medical examiner's office in New York City. Um, I am I have always been interested in forensic pathology. Uh, that's basically what she's doing in this book, although it's geared towards people who have suffered untimely deaths and um yeah i i loved this book because of all of the little sort of case studies and things it's it's well written for what it is um there's a fair amount of sort of medical gore in it so if that's not your cup of tea don't read this i appreciated the fact that she included um two chapters near the end one of which was on the 9-11 Twin Towers um, destruction and the ensuing aftermath of that. And the second one that was about the anthrax scares that happened not too long after that, the sort of terrorist anthrax attacks. So it was very interesting to read that from someone, from the point of view of someone who was dealing with the fallout of all of the people who had died as a result of one of those two things. The beginning part of the book, I, I don't want to make light of it because she's still dealing with real people who have passed away from various things, um, but more of the typical things you would expect in a medical examiner's office. So, you know, somebody who had been hit by a van or a bus, um, drug overdoses, murders, suicides, those kinds of things are the things that would come through any medical examiner's office. So the last couple chapters were an interesting kind of end to her time in that office as well as kind of a summary end to finish up her story of these two years when she was working in this in this office in New York. Um, she is obviously the focus of the book her husband is, I guess, he's not a ghostwriter because she gives him full credit, but her husband wrote the book. Um, and I found it very approachable and very interesting. If you are not at all interested in forensic pathology or do not have a good stomach for medical details, this is not a book for you. But if you like that sort of thing, it was a really good read. So thank you, Julia, for sending that on to me. I appreciate that and um, have actually already passed it on to yet another friend who said, yes, please, I would love to read that. Um, so, all good. I've got an audible book on the go, and I'm reading a very interesting book about um, a chef. That's another nonfiction book, it's, it's a biography. Um, so I'll report on that next time, because I should have uh, definitely that one maybe the audible book finished as well we'll see when I get back to you next time but for now that was it for books and I'm going to move on and talk about cross stitch next so this past week and a little bit um, I think it's been like 10 days since I filmed I have worked on three things uh, and I have a finish to share with you guys so the first thing that I wanted to share excuse me I'm throwing stuff on the floor is my finish I stitched up 
the last bit I needed to on the May wordplay. This is by Brenda Gervais. It's on a 32 count linen from Picture This Plus. And I used um, color and cotton mostly for the uh, floss substitutions. I did not use the called for colors. So got that one done. I love these. So this is number 11 of 12 of these that I have finished up. I obviously need to finish it, like make it into a little cushion, um, but not a huge rush because obviously May will not come again for another nine months. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of worry about that when we get there or a little closer to that. I may do it up this weekend if I have my sewing machine out for some other reason. I have backing fabric for it and it, it obviously needs a press, but but it is done. This is finish 14 of 20 for this year. So I have one more to do, which is the December wordplay. And I will talk about that in my plans here in a minute. Uh, next up, I worked quite a bit on my Chatelaine, which is the Desert Mandala. There is where it is currently. So this is the top edge. I'm at the top border. And I pretty much concentrated over here to get this completely finished up. So let me give you guys a little bit of a close up on that. So I finished these two borders. Um, I am doing the beading as I go uh, for the small beads. You'll see there's some bigger squares left open and those get, um, there's little square treasures, so I'm not gonna put those on till the end because I still have all of this left to do. Um, but I finished up the feathers, I finished the cactus. Lots of specialty stitches happening in the cactus blossoms. But that side is done. And my goal on this for this year was to finish everything from here up basically what you can see on the frame so i need to bring the these two borders down on this side and then i need to do the vignette over here which is the rattlesnake so i still have a fair amount of work to do on this but it's getting there um, i'm also going to fill in just a little bit i'm missing some beads on either side here to get that done i want to be even with this and that's where I'm headed for for this year so this one will be out again this month um, I'm hoping for at least four or maybe five days on it I don't think I'll get that whole upper vignette done but I want to make some progress on it so that I can say that I'm moving forward and then um, once we kicked over into August Last few days, I've been working on the Once Upon a Fairy Tale Super Size Max Color. Ooh, let's see if I can do that. So the page with the book over here is obviously finished, or maybe not obviously, but it is. And I'm working on this page over here, which has a lady holding a sword. And then this right here is most of the white horse that's standing behind her. So I have put a thousand stitches into this for a semi-sane stitchers prompt. And that's probably all I will do on that this, this month. Um, if you're somebody who has been following the Heaven and Earth designs on their Facebook group or just via email. They had some problems with the newer charts with the new DMC colors of 08 and 09. This chart is affected by that. What I'm working on right now, the page that I'm on had very limited 09, <clears throat> excuse me, on it. So I'm just opting to finish that off. And once I get that finished, then I will transfer in that rectangular block um, my finished part to the new chart in Pattern Keeper. 
and then we'll go forward using that. Um, I don't think where it's, it is used in this section, it's gonna affect anything. It's some, like I said, it's like a total of 25 stitches out of almost 8,000 stitches. So if you can even pick out number nine, you are a much better person than I am. Um, so that's where that is currently. Um, plans going forward. I'm going to try to get the other final wordplay done in the next one or two weeks. Uh, I'm probably going to work on that right now, or not right now, but this evening during my stitching time. And then I've got um, which way possibly or a stitching, a stitching shelf coming out for some other um, thousand stitch blocks. Uh, I am planning to work on my Cooler Design Summer Sampler um, with Jessie Marie. She's doing Arbitrary August though, so I told her to go ahead and spin the wheel and when she knew it was coming up, then we'll, I'll pull it to work on with her when we get to that point. And um, since it's an even month, I'll also be working on Winter Fairy at some point in this next 30 days or so, or 25 days. So I think that's kind of what I got planned. I am gonna to try to get back to talk to you guys before the end of the month. Um, I don't know if it'll be next week or the following week, but gonna to try to do that so we can keep these videos a little bit shorter. I think that's it for me today. I hope everybody is staying well, doing well, hopefully not stressing out too much about either having to go back to work or send their kids back to school in some fashion. Um, just try to be safe and your family and loved ones as well, you know, be sensible and smart about the choices you make. And um, we'll see, we'll see what the fall brings. Um, I know there's lots of different uh, school system plans for remote learning, not remote learning, half and half, it's all different, so um, I wish everyone with school-age kids or for our teaching uh, educators good luck with that transition because I know for most places that's happening in the next two weeks or thereabouts. It is here anyway. So uh, I think of you all and um, keeping you all in my thoughts. So everybody stay well and always remember to be kind. Talk to you soon.